And Rob Kreckel, how are you? How do you want me to introduce you? Uh, just as sound designer, that's fine. Sound designer for, can I mention the games you've designed sound for? Sure. Yeah. For games such as. Such well, as, that's good. Yeah. All right. Cool. You ready? Yeah. Thanks for doing this, man. Thanks for having me. Here we go. A minuscule portion of the Daily Tech News Show was brought to you by me. Because I went to patreon.com slash acedetect and donated a dollar a month to a podcast that I really enjoy. Won't you join me? This is the Daily Tech News for Monday, September 22nd, 2014. I'm Tom Merritt. Joining me now, Rob Kreckel, a sound designer on games such as The Last of Us and Uncharted 3. Uh, and uh, just a really all-around good guy I've gotten to know over the last couple of Dragon Cons. How's it going, man? Uh, it's going pretty good, Tom. Thanks for having me on. I feel like I know you from Dragon Con, even though we both live in Los Angeles. It's just one of those oddities of the way the world works. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, Dragon Con is kind of one of those melting pots where everyone seems to uh, mingle. So It is. It's the Ellis Island of geek culture. That's a great way to describe <laughs> it. Uh, and if, if, you, if The Last of Us ever made you cry, uh, you owe that in, in, in part to Rob Kreckel. So just keep that in mind yeah, as well. De definitely in part. It's a, a big team of guys over here. Yeah. And yeah, all, like, top of the industry. All right, let's take a look at the headlines. Breaking news, people. Apple sold a lot of phones. According to GigaOM, the company reported the sale of 10 million iPhones 6 and 6 Plus uh, between this past Friday and Sunday, which beat last year's 9 million sales of the 5C and 5S models. That may not seem like a big leap, but remember, iPhone 6 has not gone on sale in China yet this time due to a delay in approval for sale. So they, they beat it without China, and they had China on board last time. Yeah, it, it's interesting uh, without China, you say, but I, I just watched a video about like the line sitters and it seemed like many of them are sitting for the black market to ship them to China like, yeah. immediately. So, so some sales over there may have been represented is what you're saying. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I, I went to the uh, Apple store over in Century City this weekend and there was a line to walk in the store. They're like, here's the line for people who reserved an iPhone. Here's the line for people who want to buy an iPhone. And here's the line for people who just want to walk inside, which I thought was hilarious. Although once I got inside to just look around, it was kind of nice not to be like packed wall to wall. I'm getting that. Yeah. TechCrunch reports it has five sources of whom many work at Apple and Beats who say Apple will discontinue the Beats music streaming service. Sources could not agree on whether this would mean it would be rolled into iTunes or, or what would actually happen, but they all agreed that it will be going away. Now, Beats music just launched an app on Apple TV, but it's conspicuously absent from iOS 8 in other places, Rob. Yeah, I mean, Beats music, the they have some really good exclusive music there, but it seems very odd competing product now that Apple owns them. So it seems logical that they'll probably uh, make it go away real soon. Yeah, I feel like the, the one question is, will we see an iTunes music streaming service that's essentially beats under the iTunes brand? I get that Apple doesn't like to have multiple brands like this. I mean, like La La, where it just goes away. Yeah, I, I think that they'll probably leverage whatever technology that they gained or, or personnel maybe uh, to, to make something like that happen. But yeah, I think the Beats brand, at least for music streaming, is, is going to go away. Yeah, for sure. GigaOM passes along a Wall Street Journal tip that HTC will make Google's upcoming 64-bit tablet, which is likely to be called the Nexus 9. That would make it the first Google device to run a 64-bit version of Android. The next version of Android, Android L, will be 64-bit capable. There's a couple of phones out there capable of running it, but they're not made by Google or in conjunction with Google. HTC hasn't manufactured a tablet since the HTC Flyer in 2011. Remember the Flyer, Rob? Uh, no. No. No, yeah. no, that's HTC might be kind of glad that you don't remember the flyer. Probably, frankly. yeah. Uh, Tech in Asia reports search engine DuckDuckGo has been blocked in China. The Great Fire Index, which keeps track of this sort of thing, suggests it may have been blocked starting September 4th. The New York Times published an in-depth piece yesterday about the trend of stricter controls on internet companies in China. Google operates out of Hong Kong, but they've been seeing problems even with ads being served in China. And also messaging services Line and KakaoTalk have been blocked, among many others. 
The Toronto Star reports that BlackBerry will sell its newest Passport smartphone, that's the Square one, for $599 off contract in the United States. That's a couple hundred dollars cheaper than the unlock prices for, say, the iPhone 6 or the Samsung Galaxy S5. The 4.5-inch Square smartphone is the first totally new BlackBerry device to come to the market since CEO John Chen joined the company. Pricing for Canada has not yet been announced. Because BlackBerry's a thing, right, guys? Right? Remember us? That's what John Chen is hoping, is that it will become a thing again, because Passport, because Square. Nobody has done a Square smartphone. I say that, and of course, five people are going to email me with some small company somewhere that did a Square smartphone, but yeah, I don't I mean, know that I wanted one. I, I don't think they have the cool power to say that this is what you want, this Square cell phone. It's not, they don't, they're not at Apple, so. It just fits perfectly in your passport holder. That's what I... I don't know. Uh, you know what? BlackBerry's been gone through enough. Let's give them a chance. This, I, I, I think there's some good stuff here. So 500, I'm going to give them 100% positive vibes for having a reduced unlocked price for a phone rather than the freaking $1,000 you pay for 128 gig unlocked iPhone 6. It's ridiculous. Fair enough, fair enough. Hey, connector cable and communication port protocol fans, listen up, and I know you're out there. The Video Electronic Standards Association, aka Visa, announced Monday it's teaming up with the USB 3.0 promoter group to have a baby, kind of. Uh, and that baby will be called the DisplayPort alternate mode for the USB Type-C standard. Ah, it has its mother's reversibility. Uh, that means devices can now connect to existing DisplayPort monitors using a USB Type-C cable or a USB Type-C to DisplayPort converter, as long as those devices support the DisplayPort alt mode. A dock could support 10 gigabits per second USB data transfer and support a 4K DisplayPort monitor. Uh, essentially, this is doing what Thunderbolt already does, says, hey, we can do high data throughput and we can also support a DisplayPort monitor in one connector. Time now for some news from you. These are things submitted at our subreddit, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. Swift pause passes along the word that Google no longer requires new users to create a Google Plus account when signing up for any Google product, Gmail or anything else. According to a PC mag retelling of a marketing land report, the Google Plus account is now presented as optional during the sign up process, though you'll still need a G Plus account if you want to do things like leave comments on YouTube or leave app reviews. So I guess their, their feeling is we can force people into Google Plus in other ways without annoying them right from the sign up process. I I, that just that this is a very strange thing to me. I don't know why they're like splitting it when they really just brought it all together very recently. It seems like this could be one of the many Google products that may be going the way of the dinosaur. It makes you wonder, right? I mean, Vic yeah. Gundotra left, and that explains why they're changing policies because these were all his policies of unification. Uh, but I just I, you know, I wonder, they, they, as they always say, is like, oh no, Google Plus is still, we're still using it and, and promoting it and adding it to things. And it does have enough use right now that I, I can't see them just tossing it on the fire like they did with Google Buzz because nobody was using that at all. Right. Google Plus has, has a level of usership here. I think they're just trying to figure out what to do with it. Alan A.V. called our attention to the Anantech report that Samsung is aware of a problem with two of their solid-state drives, the 840 and the 840 Evo, that have caused low read performance on older data. Samsung engineers are working on updated firmware, and as soon as the fix has been validated, they'll get that out to end users, though no ETA has been announced. But if you're thinking about buying a solid-state drive, you might want to hold off on the 840s for just a bit, uh, and you might want to make sure your data is backed up if you're using one of these. Finally, Captain Kipper submitted the best long read of the day from Ars Technica. It's a terrific account by Cyrus Farivar about an Italian restaurant in Richmond, California, which is trying to become the worst reviewed restaurant on Yelp in order to highlight their frustration with what the restaurant owners believe is Yelp's aggressive sales tactics. Restaurants offering a 25% discount to anyone who writes a terrible review. Yelp predictably is not pleased saying the restaurant owners are violating Yelp's terms of service by offering incentives in exchange for reviews, to which the restaurant owners wrote that Yelp is violating their terms of service by being pushy, essentially. Uh, and in case you were wondering, according to the author of the article, it turns out that the food at this restaurant is awfully tasty. 
Yeah, the email exchange in this article is fairly hilarious between Yelp and the restaurant owner. It's it's worth reading, I think, just for that. Yeah, they they did a nice job of of basically parodying Yelp's very earnest and sincere request to please stop encouraging re your your customers to leave bad reviews. This is not a good idea. A Harvard study has shown that this is not a good idea. These guys don't care. Look, and as Cyrus Farivar's article, which is, is fantastic, makes clear, these guys decided to open an Italian restaurant in Richmond because they didn't care about things like customer service and maximizing potential. They just wanted to make food. They wanted to make food their way and not have to mess with all of this other part of running a restaurant. And that's what they're doing. Yeah. So this is hilarious. It's amazing. And that is a look at the headlines. Uh, we have Daily Tech News Show shirts. If you're interested, I always like to let people know about stuff like that. Uh, you can find it at slashloot.com. Just look for the podcast section, and it's the DTNS logo from Mustafa from the PolarCat.com on there. They're available in white, black, and ash. Check them out. T-shirts, slashloot.com. Oculus Connect happened over the weekend, and Oculus, uh, among many announcements, the big one was showing off the new prototype Crescent Bay. Uh, they've got a new design. It's now more lightweight, more ergonomic. They bought the industrial design from Carbon recently, so one would expect this is probably a product of that. Uh, another things that they've added, 360-degree head tracking. So the external camera now tracks the back of the rig as well as the front, so you can turn your head all the way around. Uh, an upgraded screen, they wouldn't release any details about it, but the reviewers said it definitely was a better screen than DK2. It's lighter. It has integrated headphones, uh, so you don't have to have a second cord running up. And they say they're going to license Real Space's 3D Audio, which was developed by Visasonics out of the University of Maryland. Uh, Oculus CEO Brendan Aribe donated, 30, donated $31 million to Maryland to build a VR lab there. So that's probably where the connection comes from. He went there for a year or so. Among the demos, a demo from Epic Games called Show computer demo, uh, partnership with Unity platform, supporting Rift on all of their official platforms, the free and the paid versions. What did you think of looking over all of this coverage here and people saying, you know, this, this definitely is pretty close to consumer availability but then oculus rob saying nope we're not we're not ready to announce any kind of consumer availability could be this year could be next we're not saying i i love the way oculus has actually been rolling out their dev kits publicly and letting people get a hold of them and and letting the press like see each iteration i think that's amazing i think it's just really good for hype for the device but also great to show like a little bit of inside baseball on how vr is like being made i mean it's that is something that I'm a big fan of, like getting to see how the sausage is made. So I'm, I'm a big fan. I think it's the sincerity of what uh, Lucky and, and friends are doing that helps them navigate this, right? I mean, this could be a PR disaster if they kept showing a prototype that got a little bit better every time and there's no consumer availability. They could be getting trashed. People would be saying, ah, it's, 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 it's vaporware, it's never going to come. But they've had the opposite reaction. It's, it's been very favorable. And I think it's because when they do these demos, they don't come off as people trying to palm something off and cover something up. They come off as somebody's like, yeah, we're showing you what we've done since the last time we talked. And, yeah. and you can see why we're not ready to give this thing out yet. And they've also let it out to developers. And it actually really seems like they're making good use of their aspect, assets from Facebook and from Carbon because the actual device is much nicer looking. Uh, the tracking dots all over the place obviously are making a big impact on head tracking, 360 degrees, which is a big deal. That can help to elim eliminate a lot of the motion sickness that a lot of people tend to get because you can tilt your head. Um, so that that stuff seems really key. And uh, and now it's just, I think, as time goes on, it's what, what are people going to do with this thing, right? That's like the big question. What's the killer app? Yeah, the, there was a lot of discussion of that in the coverage that, that I, uh, I read. Uh, in fact, uh, Eric Johnson of Recode quoted several devs that he talked to at Connect saying they thought it might be a social kind of, of application that starts off the Oculus Killer app. Obviously, it's going to be games. They're going to have games at launch and it's always going to be games. But the thing that really gets people to use it in large numbers might have to be something social. Uh, there's also movies out there. I mean, there's there's a couple of firms working on making movies tailor-made for this experience so that you can look around and choose what you're looking at within the movie. If you had if you had to guess what 
kind of thing, and you're around a lot of game development, so I feel like you, you might have a little insight here. Uh, what do you think could end up being the thing that captures everyone's attention? I really firmly believe it is going to be a game. I, I mean, I think social is, is definitely going to be a huge part of it. Maybe, you know, like a metaverse or a second life, you know, something where people can just jump in and sort of walk around. But I, I really think a game, and it's probably not going to be like Unreal or something crazy. It's going to be something simple like with the Wii, it was bowling, right, or, or the Wii sports stuff. It was very simple, easily accessible, very easy to understand by people who are not gamers. I think it's going to be something like that that really is going to be used to kind of show off the technology. So it might be a game in, in the social aspect. So you have like your Second Life type thing and you can play simple games. You can play horseshoes, you can play bowling, you can do these things. And that might be the killer app that just shows people, holy crap, this is this is amazing. That feels like the right thing, and I don't know who makes it or what that game is, but the idea of it being social, I think the reason you have so many devs talking about that is because this is perceived from the outside as a very isolated thing, right? You put the goggles on and you can't see anybody and you look funny and you're in this world alone. And so I think overcoming that for people who are curious is to say like, hey, but you can all get together and do this thing and you can be in the same room or not, uh, but you'll be able to do this thing. And that was what I think made the Wii so uh, appealing to people who otherwise wouldn't have been into game consoles at all was, oh, I, 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 this is natural. I can, I can pick this up. I can do this sort of thing. And because you can't pick up a gun yet, maybe you will by launch time, and in, in the Oculus, something that involves people communicating with each other and sharing an experience seems like it would be the sort of thing to capture imagination versus a particular type of game that we already know how to do with a controller being ported over somehow. Yeah, I don't think that's what's going to be exciting. I think the the controller that they end up coming up with or, or somebody else ends up coming up with is going to be extremely important to this, like, Adoption. I, I don't know if it can be the traditional sort of like paddle controller that, that we're all used to. I think there's a couple companies, and the name is escaping me right now, that are actually making uh, like gloves, like haptic style finger tracking gloves. And that might be maybe charades is the game, Tom. <laughs> Right? Maybe you're doing virtual trades. You know, you say that, but who would have thought bowling was the thing to kick off Wii, right? Maybe it right. is. Maybe it's some like super modern hipster charades version that, that somebody comes out with. Uh, I do think you're right about the gloves, though. Those seem to be the best the best bet for some sort of control interface there. Uh, cause, so that you can just... Because what this is all about, 360 degrees, they were standing, even though they still say this is a seated experience, they had them standing in this demo. Mm -hmm. It feels like they just want you to be able to get into this world and go and not have to think about what you're doing. And gloves would fit with that. What about the sound? This is the first time we've seen a prototype with integrated headphones. They they weren't the greatest looking headphones, but they were they were definitely better according to the reviewers than having a separate pair of headphones stuck in your ears. And this uh, this idea that they would license uh, the real space 3D audio from Visasonics means they're trying to do some things that play into the 360 degree virtual world so you have a 360 degree virtual sound as well. Mm -hmm. I, I you know I'm happy to see that they're integrating headphones. I think that's a good first step uh, because we're, having had one of these headsets on before, like putting the headphones on over the band, it just makes it very uncomfortable. Um, it takes you out of the experience too. Yeah, it takes you out. And having the headphones integrated is great uh, for ergonomics, if, if nothing else. But the fact that they're thinking about audio at the inception of this thing is really promising. Uh, Real Space is an interesting choice for them to partner with. Um, I think there might be a connection like we talked about uh, through Maryland, which makes sense. But there are a couple other companies, um, one of which is a, a plugin called 3 Deception by uh, two, uh, two Big Ears. And they're also going to be supporting virtual reality. Uh, and they currently, uh, they support a number of different platforms, Unity, Wise, Native SDK, Pure Data, and uh, Max MSP. And Wise in particular is, is important because that is industry standard uh, audio middleware throughout the industry. And this is for console games, uh, PC games. That being supported is, is great for the, the top tier developers. And then Unity obviously is, is huge in the indie scene. So um, those being supported is very important. 
Uh, yeah, and we saw Unity has a partnership with Oculus now, which makes that development a lot easier. And yep. you've got the Unreal Engine there being demonstrated by Epic. Right. Um, this, it's all sort of coming together, isn't it? Yes, and uh, I think it's interesting, though, because another thing we talked about was these technologies are, are sort of very infantile, uh, these two companies in particular, when uh, a lot of game companies, including some that I've worked for, we've we've been working in this space already in a way. Uh, when we work in surround sound, it's still virtual 3D, right? You still have to simulate sounds moving around you. Uh, now this is just taking it to uh, a more minimal level with two speakers attached to your head. Uh, but there's there's various techniques for recording and, and lots of different uh, algorithms to, to simulate it to certain processing that can be used to simulate, you know, sounds moving around you properly. So... It's going to be important for hurting people in the reality, in the reality of, uh, of VR. Uh, the audio is going to have to match the visuals. So, If you're designing a game for Oculus and they say, we've licensed Real Space 3D audio, does that help you in any way? Does it hinder you? Or do, does it matter if you're like, well, we already have our own solution here? Uh, it depends on the developer. Some, a lot of indie developers are going to be great that there's some solution that they can immediately plug into and say, okay, Okay, we, we have something we can look at. We have something that other Indies are using, and we can we can uh, kind of collaborate and make something out of that. Bigger developers, they they're going to take it or leave it, and uh, you know they'll use their own software or they'll they'll adopt this and they'll modify it and change it in, in a way that makes it work. Uh, it's not it's definitely not a negative for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you were you were pointing out before the show that uh, Real Space, you know, does this thing with a stick. And, and audio cameras where they try to localize the, the sounds that they're hearing not only in space but also with video, which is great for sporting events or transporting you to the middle of the concert. Uh, and, and it's even got some security and defense <laughs> applications apparently. Uh, but that that isn't necessarily what you could do for a video game. So it implies that they are really thinking beyond just the gaming platform and saying, you know, we want to come up with, we want to open this up for, for other types of uses, maybe, maybe a movie theater type of use. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Having a, uh, the, the audio camera, I think is what they called it. Uh, that would be great for a sporting event. You basically stick that in the middle of the stadium and it's going to be able to lo localize all the sound of the event that's happening based on where you're s sitting virtually, which, or, or standing or whatever it is. And that's very cool for those live events. Less useful on the game side, but uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that it won't be used for something. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's uh, take a look at the calendar real quick. Speaking of video games, Xbox One set to launch in India. In fact, I think with the time difference, it's now launched in India. I think it's already September 23rd there. 39,990 rupees. That's exactly the same as the PS4 launched at back in January. Uh, they were supposed to have an Xbox One launch in China today as well. They are still, and when I say today, I mean September 23rd because it's tomorrow there. Uh, they are still having their event in Shanghai apparently, but uh, they're only announced that the Xbox One is delayed in China. They haven't really explained why. Uh, and Sony's PlayStation TV has been announced to be coming to the U.S. on October 14th. That's the smaller version that can play the Vita games. It can stream PlayStation games. It's kind of being billed as an extension uh, to your PS4. You have your PS4 in your main gaming area, and this can, can extend it into other areas. It's a, it's essentially a, a, a Vita in a box, is what it is, and it's coming to the U.S. October 14th. Our pick of the day comes from Dave. It's an add-on for XBMC, which is now called Cody, by the way. They're transitioning that name. The add-on is called Pseudo TV. Dave writes, as someone who will soon be moving into an area that has Comcast as the only option for cable, I figured I would attempt to cut the cord, more or less. I have a PC hooked up to my living room TV, and I'm one of those digital hoarders with a 4 terabyte external drive nearly filled with movies and TV shows, mostly ripped from my own personal collection, because who has the space for 600 DVs? DVDs these days. Uh, Dave says, my wife and I would stare at a list of movies on TV and usually end up switching back to cable watching a censored and cut up version of something we already owned on DVD on the PC or on the PC. So I did a little looking around and found an add-on for XBMC called Pseudo TV Live where you can set up your own channels and flip through your own local content as well as online content. The add-on comes with a few dozen RSS feeds set as channels including Twit and Scam School. Uh, the add-on has a built-in channel guide and has almost indistinguishable from a real cable system, although it can be somewhat frustrating to set up. Once you get it working properly, it becomes a very viable 
alternative to cable. I have had it set up and working properly for a couple of weeks now, and my wife and I have not turned back to cable since, except to watch the Bears stomp on the 49ers last Sunday, he says. I don't know. I got, did he turn on cable just for that? Wasn't it over the air? Uh, I'm not sure. I think he just wanted to get a dig in with 49ers, which I don't care. I'm not a 49ers fan. Are you, Rob? No, not no. at all. Uh, but pseudo TV sounds like a pretty good extension, no? Yeah, I mean, uh, this this is viable for me because I'm I'm very close to cutting the cord. I'm I'm wondering what the speed is because uh, that's one thing that just annoys me about regular cable boxes is that channel surfing is not what it once was. Yeah. Uh, you know, clicking through channels takes takes an annoying amount of time. So I'm wondering what the speed would be on on something like this. Uh, it's it's silly, but it's it's something that actually matters to me. It's going to be limited by the load time, right? Because right. everything that they're putting here is gonna is gonna take a moment to load. Presumably, the things on your local network will load faster than the things they're streaming over the internet. Um, but yeah, you're always going to have that lag. We we cannot replicate the analog flip 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 of the 1970s yet. Why not, Tom? That's what I want. someday. Want someday we'll get back to that. I know we will. I I remember getting digital TV for the first time from AT and T of all places, uh, the pre merger AT and T back in 1999. 1999 or 2000, I think it might have been 2000, and just being like, what? I can't just hit up and it goes up. I have to wait for it to load? This is ridiculous. Yeah. And uh, it's been bad ever since. Uh, I feel like I'm getting old, Tom. Yep. I got a crick in my back. <laughs> you can send your picks to feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com, and you can find my picks at dailytechnewsshow.com slash picks. All right, I've got a couple of messages of the day to get to before we finish up here. The first one comes from Marcelo in Brazil. He was r- driving to Rio while he recorded this. I assume he wasn't driving, or else that would, that could be dangerous. Uh, but he did uh, he did sort of the, the file that I got was cut off right at the beginning. So if it starts ab- abruptly, uh, my apologies. But here's what Marcelo has to say. Here from Brazil, I was catching up on the episodes as I was driving from Sao Paulo to Rio de Janeiro. And uh, on Thursday, you guys discussed the uh, Apple announcement that they don't monetize data. Looks like a genius move on their side. If you look at the big bets from Apple, they are all around personal data. They presented the Apple Watch as the most personal device they ever had. They used the personal uh, term a lot of times during the presentation. And uh, health data, financial data, even home kit. This is all about uh, personal data, and if they bet that uh, people will jump headfirst into quantified self going forward, only makes sense that uh, they're breaking their competitors' leg by putting out there that these guys live out of sharing your data. Uh, my thoughts, I'm a proud patron. I devour every episode. Keep on the good work. Thank you lot. I wish I knew more Portuguese to thank you properly, Barcelo, but I appreciate that. And I appreciate you taking the uh, the time and effort to send that to us. He's dead on about the personal data. Uh, and 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 that being one of the reasons that Tim Cook took that took those kind of veiled jabs at Google in that privacy policy letter is to say, we all know you want to store your health data, your financial data, all of this stuff with somebody. We don't have an interest in spying on that. Store it with us. Rob, do you think that is compelling? Do you think that people buy that? I, I buy it. I, I I'm a big fan of big data. I like I'm an oversharer. I think we all are in some way if we're on Twitter or Facebook. But uh I I, I, I am more apt to give it to Apple if they're gonna carefully store it for me and then give it to only the things that I want it to go to versus going to say Google and it sort of being lent to whoever wants to pay money for it. So yeah. I, I think it's definitely a good thing. I think those are good points. My my hesitation with Apple in storing too much data with them, and the, this may be true of any big company, is that I worry about data portability. Google, for all of their monetization and wanting to scan your emails and all of that, does make an effort to say, we are going to tell you what we're doing with your data with a transparency report. Your data out of things whenever we can. Uh, and, and so they, they've at least committed to to data portability and for the most part they've acted on it apple i feel like their tradition is we own the data <laughs> that you store with us and while we won't be you know nefarious with it you you if you leave the apple universe you're not getting it back 
Very right? true. Yeah. Apple saying you could take it with you if you left. Yeah, I mean that, that. I guess that is one of the biggest positives with Google is that you can pretty much remove your data from them at any given time. They're very, you know, uh, easy uh, about that. But I don't know. I, I, I everything in my ecosystem. I mean, this is obviously just uh, my mileage, but everything in my my, my computer, my phone, uh, you know, all the devices I use are pretty much Apple. So it just makes sense for me personally. Yeah. Did you get a six? Uh, not yet. Uh, I just got a 5S recently and I'm like, uh, every two years, I can't just spend the money. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I just hear had you. a baby, Tom. Damn it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you don't want to tell the baby. The baby won't understand that it can't eat today because daddy bought a six plus. I, I get you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and our final email is about the 6. Uh, a few shows ago, I asked folks for their reviews and their feedback on the iPhone 6. And uh, we got here from Time Lady, who says, uh, I got the iPhone 6 Plus, and for a few reasons. I could say I am getting it because I'm an academic who lectures in IT topics. I'm also mobility impaired. So in a wheelchair, an electric one like Stephen Hawking has, as well as manual at times, having an iPhone, iPad mini, and MacBook Air is a lot to carry. The new phone replaces two of those devices, so that's a huge convenience. The security and improved iOS 8 functionality is hugely convenient as well. Try reaching those card readers at checkouts that are often mounted in a fixed position when you're in a wheelchair. So TLDR version, shiny tech, cool concepts for teaching potential makes my disability less inconvenient, thus enhancing my life quality, and isn't that really what tech should be aiming for? Uh, wow, that that is a compelling reason. If again, especially if you're living in the Apple universe, to say I'm going to replace two of these devices with one now. That's pretty fantastic. It is an interesting point to make that the uh, six plus does sort of replace your phone and your iPod, iPad Mini. That's I don't know if they really want that. They want you to keep those, but it's, it's sort of an interesting point. Thanks for the email, Time Lady. That's a great perspective uh, to have. Appreciate you writing in. All right, and uh, thank you, Rob Kreckel, for joining us. Uh, you can follow Rob on Twitter. He's Rob Kreckel, R-O-B-K-R-E-K-E-L. And what, what sorts of things might they find should they follow you, Rob? Uh, you follow me. Uh, I post a lot about game audio and audio, but tech in general. I'm a big tech guy. Uh, but uh, in addition to working on games, you'll get little tidbits of, of the stuff I'm working on. But I'm also a sound designer for uh, movies and other things. And uh, if you're interested in uh, filmmaking or, or you require some sound effects for your films, you can actually go by uh, bit.ly slash triune SFX and you can uh, check out some of the sound packs that I made with the FilmRite guys if you're familiar nice. with that YouTube channel. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, so these are freely downloadable? They're not free. They're uh, they're for purchase, but there are many packs. They're broken up into the most basic pack, which are very cheap, and uh, the more expensive packs, which kind of encompass everything. So there's guns and melee. Oh, and we're not talking about like I threw three or four sound effects up there for people. Like you want a 357 Magnum sound effects pack that actually sounds like a 357 Magnum. This is the place to go. Right. There here. you go. This is yeah, crazy. Exactly. And they're all drop and ready. They're you know the idea is that they're for indie filmmakers or YouTubers to just take and drop into their films, and you know they don't have to work about it. you get pro quality sound for a uh, decent pro nice and they've got some scores over there as well that's really cool uh oh, yeah. so yeah once again bit.ly slash triune sfx that's t-r-i-u-n-e-s-f-x and we'll make sure this gets in the uh, show notes as well rob it was great talking with you man this was really fun thanks for doing this yeah, thanks, Tom. I love uh, love DTNS. I am a Patreon, so I'm very happy to uh, be on the show anytime. Well, thanks to you and the other 4,285 patrons uh, for supporting the show. I really do appreciate it. DailyTechNewsShow.com slash donate is the place to go if you would like to support the show. All we ask is if you see some value in the show and you can't afford to give some value back, uh, then that's how you can do it. Uh, just show your appreciation for the show in whatever way possible, whether it's donating some Dogecoin or being a Patreon like Rob uh, or, or just telling folks about the show. Uh, any way you do it is fine with us. DailyTechNewsShow.com slash donate. Don't forget you can have a voice in what stories we cover. Maybe that's the way you, you can participate at our subreddit. DailyTechNewsShow.reddit.com is the place for that. You can email us, feedback at DailyTechNewsShow.com. Our phone number is 512-59-DAILY. That's 512-593-2459. And listen to the show live, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 1.30 Pacific at AlphaGeekRadio.com. Our website for all of this stuff 
is dailytechnewsshow.com. We'll see you tomorrow with Patrick Beja. This podcast is part of the Frog Pants Studios Network. For more information about this and other shows, visit frogpants.com. Audio program so good, it's like you're there. Ta-da! Sweet. That's fun. Good good stuff, man. That was great. Yeah. Ugh. I'm glad we had a, a topic like Oculus today, too, because it's a nice cross-section of wasn't top of the news, so we weren't necessarily like repeating something. Something that I know the audience cares about, and then we can have an ongoing kind of wider conversation, but also plays into one of your areas of expertise as well. It's great. Yeah, that kind of coalesced nicely. Yeah. That was good. And, oh, I, you know what? When we were talking about the iPhone 6 Plus replacing the iPad mini and, and a laptop, Curtis B. in the chat room was saying, that's why I'm getting a 6 Plus. Won't even need a laptop bag anymore. It's true. Um, I don't think I could do that because there are things that I do on my laptop that I just cannot replicate even on a 10-inch tablet. But the the idea that the 6 Plus is capable, or, or the Note for that matter, doesn't even have to be the Apple true. product, is capable of what my laptop 10 years ago was capable of fascinates me. Like if we could just get rollable screens and keyboards so that, you know, you're only carrying around the processor essentially, and then you just plug it into whatever format you want. Yeah. Or really you just need one of those projector keyboards. You don't even need the flexible one, right? You know, I tried one of those out again at Brookstone this weekend. There's still not, still not very, they, they work, but I mean, when it, when it becomes viable, maybe. Yeah, they've got some. They've got some work to do. Hey, Tom. Yes. Okay, so I accidentally opened FaceTime just randomly during the show, so now it has seized my video, but I'm still here. Okay. That's all. So we're <laughs> yeah. now speaking with the abyss. You're now speaking with the logo. Who are you FaceTiming with so we can say hello? No, <laughs> nobody. It just. I think FaceTime's <laughs> app sometimes just is near another app that I'm opening and it opens by mistake and mm. then the entire universe collapses in on itself. And the settings in Google Plus or the Google Hangout we'll won't, take won't take it back. Nope. That's, that's messed Very up. Very polite app. <laughs> um, oh, no, no, uh, it's yours. So, uh, Rob, that was a great show. Great Thank show, you. really. Thank you. Um, please come back. <laughs> uh, anytime, anytime. I, I, I mean that. Yeah, it was, it was really fun. Um, I love when we talk about audio stuff. Uh, so, um, we just hang around and, and edit and do stuff. So if you are like off, like have five minutes left in your lunch break, drop off. But if you want to stick around, stick around. I actually got, uh, about 20. So I'll stick around for a couple minutes. Well, then you can help us with the show titles. Yeah. Take off whenever you need to, but you're welcome to hang out as long as you want. Yeah. I really, um, I really want to get a six plus, but I, I wasn't kidding. Diapers and baby food are expensive, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hear you. How's um, the baby? Baby's awesome. He is yeah. he is like growing so fast. It's it's you know you think about well my my phone is basically a computer. My kid went from being like a worm that ate, slept, and pooped and kind of wiggled a little <laughs> bit, and now he's like sitting up and smiling and laughing and can recognize me and like it's the evolution is quite quick. Amazing. That is amazing. Oh All right. boy. What do we got All for right. titles? Here we go. Um, the, so the top vote getters are two, uh, the beat doesn't go on. <laughs> I would go for the slightly grammatically incorrect, the beats don't go on just for the sound of it. Um, you've got duck, duck gone. Uh, I like the, uh, sort of odd poetic quality of it has its mother's responsibility. <laughs> um, we've got, there was one I really loved. Um, uh, where is it? Uh, well, we've got Get the Duck Out of Here, of course. And the other one was, where to go? Oh, China Hates Peking Duck, as in P-E-E-K. -E -E <laughs> which is on the border, but I love it. I love a good pun. Um, and then I guess there was some, let's see, Square is the New Blackberry. Um, mm -hmm. As in, you know, is the New Black. As in Why Square? Because it's the Square Blackberry. In the shape. Oh, square! I get it because of the square <laughs> you shape. You were all the way on to Jack. I was Dorsey. thinking of the square company. I'm like, we didn't mention yeah. any stories about square today. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
And then there's the always classic, hate us on Yelp, which actually is pretty great. <laughs> um, and by the way, that is possibly my favorite story I've ever seen on Ars Technica. Like, he, that guy just nailed it. It's so great. Yeah, I mean, that, oh, that email is so good. <laughs> the yeah. email back is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You it's violated like... our fact. So there. <laughs> Yelp. Oh, man. So anyway, those are the options. Uh, we'll give it a moment and then uh, and then select. Um, Tom, I, I should like ask it. you this before yeah, the show, but ahead. where's the chat? What chat do you guys use? Do oh, guys IRC. Use, uh, Diamond Club? Or? Yeah, we use the Diamond Club chat. The same one. Oh, I should have logged on. Dang uh, I'm sorry. I forgot to tell you about it. I should have mentioned nah, that. Fine. It's probably better. That one's staring at the chat the whole time. <laughs> well, you can get in there now if you want. Um, what do you think? What's the plan? I don't. Um, you know, I like the beats doesn't go on. It made yeah. me laugh, and I even like it yeah. as phrased there. Yeah, I like that too. I think that is the the winner. Although I will say a prayer for it has its mother's reversibility because. Well, thank you. I wrote that. Yeah, I so know that's why you're not picking it because you're being. I'm happy that you like it. about your writing, but you shouldn't be because that was good. It's but also a little long for a title, but. Oh, it has his mother's reversibility. And it's about like the most benign story in the bunch, too. <laughs> yeah. Gulp. The thing is, like, I know that there are at least a dozen people in the audience that are like, oh, that's so cool. USB with display port. That's amazing. That's going to solve so many problems for me. Yup. That's why I like doing those stories. It's like that's Thunderbolt under a different name, essentially. Yeah. Well, and that's why they're excited. They're like, I don't have to pay for Thunderbolt. I can just go to with USB 3.0 C. Zing. Or USB 3C or whatever. Uh, are we all watching well. Gotham tonight? Are we excited for that? Are we It's neutral? set to record on my DVR. All right. All right. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that the the like main villain they're pushing is not from the DC universe at all is mm. kind of like worrisome to me yeah it's the smallville problem yeah right and it's actually the arrow problem as well where they're like yes you can live in this universe but only in this part so arrow has done a really good job whereas smallville had moments of brilliance but i i felt like they they suffered from that restriction well yeah they suffered 10 seasons long right into a Brinks truck. So yeah I'm and they also like smallville. come on season seven you were done why yeah. i don't know why they kept kept going but i know we watched it faithfully if so did we painfully because it had such an impact in the beginning yeah those first four seasons were great but yeah. the problem is if you say you can't live in the entire universe but superman is your main character but he yeah. can never be superman like you're kind of set up for not being able to end that series well yeah uh whereas i, I think they ended it as well as they could have yeah maybe given the circumstances i i certainly couldn't have ended it better i'm not going to claim i could have yeah yeah, but it was a it was it's a close series close to my heart because uh, we that was like that was <laughs> that also represents one of the last times we ever went to the video store and ran right out and got the next season. We were yeah, so we did the same about, thing. Like actually, it, it had a real it had a real impact, and I I hope the best for Gotham, but I do wonder. I ended up um, giving our DVD sets to a neighbor in Oakland whose kid. Uh, he bought one of them at a garage sale we were having, and then he came. He knew we had more than just the first season, so he came back. He's like, "Do you have the other seasons? Because my kid's really into this." I'm like, "Here, just take them. <laughs> you know, give them back if you want. If you don't, no big deal." Uh, but yeah, knock yourselves out. Enjoy. Because at that by that point, we're like DVDs. We don't use DVDs anymore. Mm -hmm. I still use uh, very cool round items that I put into my PlayStation, so that still lives. Yeah, I have to do that. I, I, I'm still a disc person. I still buy Blu-rays. I'm a sucker. I don't know. Do you really? You buy Blu-rays, huh? Yeah, I'm an audio guy. You yeah. can't, can't yeah. really get uncompressed audio. Sure. No, streaming, that makes sense. So. Yeah. Granted, I don't buy that many these days. It's pretty... I, I pr pretty much pick and choose. But, it's like uh, event-based. Well, I've got a handful. I have, like, the final season of Lost on Blu-ray because that's what it first kit. You know, they were putting stuff out. And I have the last couple of seasons of Doctor Who, and I have Star Trek, the J.J. Abrams hmm. Star Trek. I think those are all the Blu-rays I have, though, right there. I have a couple of Marvel movies on Blu-ray because yeah. they're just fun to look at in um, 
wow, every noise is happening in my neighborhood right now, like all of them. <laughs> the blower, the garbage, like airplanes. It's amazing. Do you hear it, Rob? Because I don't, I'm uh, on them. Yeah, I hear it. I yeah. can hear uh, there's something like a power saw or a yeah, airplane. Power saw. Something happening. Yep. It's, it's the joy problem. of the IFB. I don't hear any of it. Yeah. Well, that's good. Um, let's see what else. What else is going on? Agents of Shields back. Yes, finally. Please still be good. With um, Zena. Wait, yes. Is it is it good? I I watched like the first three episodes oh, and I was okay. not impressed. Uh, Tom and Jenny would like to tell you something. Yes, Jenny, you, you take you take this okay. one. Okay. So um, <laughs> it is. It was an entire show waiting for the release of Captain America. Okay. And without giving anything away, the moment, like the lead up to the time period in which Captain America was about to be released, it suddenly found purpose and meaning and was everything you could have hoped it would be from a S.H.I.E.L.D.-centric thing. But boy, did we all have to suffer for a couple episodes because Captain America wasn't coming out till April. And they right. really should have just started the show in January. Uh, so please, if you have spare time, go watch it. Suffer through. You can even fast forward parts you find silly, uh, which we did, and then you'll get to these episodes, and all of a sudden you'll be like, "Whoa, hey, that got better." So there I you think go. it was Io9 that did a really good like. Here are the episodes before the Captain America mm -hmm. crossover you need to watch to understand what's going on, uh -huh. and then and it was only like five or six episodes. Yeah, so it's worth it. Uh, will it remain worth it while they wait for next Avengers? I don't know. But at least they now they have they have richness of storytelling that you were hoping for all along. Um, and the later season, later in the season, they have the crossovers that you were yes. hoping for. You know, like the yes. the guest appearances. But wow. they're always like very teasy. It's mm -hmm. always like not quite the character you super want to see. But that was nice. What are you talking about? The very the finale with no, um, oh, I know, yeah, the finale with the person with the thing and but, Agent What's Her Face. Yep, yeah, showed up yeah. for real. And I, I did enjoy the Thor crossover, although I, I could have picked other. I, I enjoyed it anyway. Yeah, you so don't actually see it. Thor, Captain yeah. America. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm uh, waiting for that moment. I'm interested though, because I mean, without getting into spoiler territory, the events of the movie kind of shift things a bit. Right. Yeah. So. That's what makes the show finally work. Okay. Yeah. They're they're dealing with those shifts. All right. And you're like, oh, now it's interesting. <laughs> It gets very shifty. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's quite good, and I'm happy about that. And uh, I'm just happy any TV is on at all again, even if it's gonna take a while to roll the really good stuff out. Um, because Outlander is ending, <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> I've been watching uh, Fargo. I've been catching up mm -hmm. on that. Uh, I liked The Leftovers. Um, in the end. Mm -hmm. uh, which I know you disagree with me on. And I disagree. Um, what else have I been watching? It's been kind of nice to be able to just sample. We we binged on Once Upon a Time last night. <laughs> yeah, that has its moments. Um, it suffers from network TV. Oh, something is on my nose. It's on the nose. But I think those are like all, not a result of the writers. That's a result of network notes. Like this is for a certain age of people, and you can be dark, but you have to explain everything as opposed to leave anything to to. Uh, Chain well, we were playing um, Star Force on our Nexus Sevens while watching it, so it was kind of the perfect combination. Yeah, no, that is. You that don't is, have to pay a hundred percent attention yeah, to that one. That is smart. I think the I have so many shows to catch up on. It's hard though because my wife is so not into television that isn't The Housewives, which is makes me a little dead inside. <laughs> It's funny though, cause she's super. It's it's. I think it's the curse of being like super intelligent, right? She she is she has a doctorate. She's getting her second doctorate, so she's super intelligent all the time. So when she does it for entertainment, she really wants to turn her brain off, and then she gravitates towards those those really crappy like Bravo shows. Yeah. I think that's fair. I think when you get more than one doctorate, you get to do whatever you want. Uh, I don't argue. <laughs> I don't argue with it. I, I just let it happen. I'm like, I'm I'm not into this. I want to watch like Agents of Shield. I just have to get in my TV show watching when I can. Yeah, I, I imagine hour long television takes a serious perspective shift when you have a little human. Yeah. Yeah. Although 
it's not too bad. He he goes to bed at seven o'clock, so it's it's really not that bad. Oh, just wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, just wait. At the moment, I should say, it's not that yes. bad. Yes. Although he did just start sleeping through the night again last night, which yay, good congratulations, job, yeah. good time, good timing. He like he was sleeping through the night, and then he turned like five and a half months, and he was like, "Holy crap, I can roll around! Holy crap, I can like sort of wiggle and crawl, not fully." And he was just waking up constantly because he was just amazed by his abilities. It's like Aww. I have so much. Power. This is so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So cool. I never get tired of babies. Babies are super cool. Let's see. All right, so we have a title. I can get rid of that. We have... Yeah, I'm out of the post. Boom. Um, Done. Wow, Boom. I am... Hey, Tom, Shut I'm up. getting emails from you to the DTNS account so late. I just got one of the discussion emails like right now. Weird. Can you guys see that on my camera? That's my my little man. Let's see. Oh, let me see. Hold on. Let me... <gasps> oh. oh wait, we have to shut. You know what? We have to shut up. Hold on. Talk. That's Talk, so Rob. Cute. Talking. Oh, this is my son, Robbie. He's adorable. He's sitting there. It's amazing. There ah, I couldn't <laughs> help it. So cute. He is sitting upright. Little little bit of help. He's not quite <laughs> there yet. He's almost there though. He was propped. You can't tell. He looks looks like he's doing it himself. He's very pleased. All right, everybody. All right. I'm yep. gonna take off. I'm gonna. We are too. Thanks again, Rob. All right. Thank you. All right, guys. Bye. Bye.